السيد دوفال مستشار الأمن القومي أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكريم أسعد بكم في هذا اللقاء وفي هذا مركز مقدرا الدعوة الكريمة من لدن قيادة هذا المركز الثقافي والحضاري من أجل تعزيز تواصلنا الثقافي والحضاري حول العالم No voice. Ah, good. Yeah. His Excellency, Mr. Doval, advisor of the Secretary uh, Council, um, uh, Council. Uh, His Excellencies, uh, Eminencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm delighted to be here and appreciate the kind invitation from this cultural center and to further promote our relationship uh, culturally and on the civilizational level. <laughs> العريق للهند التاريخ الثقافي والحضاري ونؤمن بأهمية التواصل مع هذا التاريخ في عالمنا الإسلامي ونقدر أيضا على وجه الخصوص التنوع الإيجابي في جمهورية الهند هذا التنوع والذي عزز من مفهوم التعايش من خلال الوعي الذي تتمتع به الحكمة من لدن هذا التعايش. We appreciate the great and long history of India and we appreciate the diversity that is there in India and we believe in the necessity of establishing communication and outreach with this diverse culture in India. We we'll also appreciate the uh, positive uh, coexistence that exists in, within this diversity and how this diversity further promotes the good relationship between the different uh, cultures. In this world, the world has created Allah Azza wa Jalla, the world. This world is a natural and also natural. And we should be able to understand the world هذا التنوع عندما نستوعبه استيعابا صحيحا عندئذ نسلك مسلكا صحيحا من خلال الوعي الذي لدينا Of course this uh, diversity it's been on this earth from the very inception uh, we must appreciate this diversity and we understand it that this diversity, uh, diversity is an unavoidable part of life if we understand it in such a manner, then we will be able to approach it very positively. يختلف الناس في أديانهم يختلفون في لغاتهم يختلفون في ثقافاتهم يختلفون في أفكارهم يختلفون في مفاهيمهم التحليلية نحو الأفكار ولكن هذا الاختلاف هو شأن طبيعي طبيعة البشر وهذا التنوع بين البشر أثر الإنسانية عبر تاريخها ويجب أن يفهم هذا التنوع على أنه ثراء إنساني هنا الوعي هنا النقلة النوعية للبشرية نحو صالحها في ازدهارها وسلامها Of course diversity exists in many colors and forms We have diversity in languages, in ethnicities, in thinking and how we analyze our thinking. Uh, diversity is a natural part of humanity, and we look at it as a source of enrichment. If we start looking at diversity as a source of enrichment, then we'll, there will be a shift in our thinking, a leap forward. Well, you want, uh, we all know unity in diversity. Yes, you're asking. Yes. والوحدة كما ذكرنا قبل قليل هي في التنوع نعم الوحدة في التنوع yes as I said we uh, unity in diversity ولا بد أن ندرك ذلك على أرض الواقع وليس مجرد كلمات أو محاضرات أو نظريات أو مفاهيم 
نجعلها في الكتب ولكن يجب أن تكون أمرا واقعا فعلا الوحدة في التنوع And we should not have this uh, concept only in textbooks or in speeches. We should apply it on the ground. It should become something palpable on the ground. And never leave it as just a concept unutilized. لدينا في منظمتنا وهي منظمة دولية عدد من الأصدقاء وعدد من الحلفاء من جميع الأديان ومن جميع الثقافات حول العالم ونعتز بهذه الصداقة وهذا الحلف وهذا التعاون المشترك مع الجميع. Uh, in our organization, which is an international independent organization, we have alliances and friendship with different faith and cultures of the world. And we are proud of this fact and we continue to strengthen these relationships. ولدينا ولدي أيضا على وجه الخصوص بصفتي أمينا عاما لهذه المنظمة أصدقاء متنوعون في جمهورية الهند من جميع التنوع لدينا أصدقاء قريبون جدا نتعاون معهم حتى أيضا من إن شئنا قلنا من الجالية الإسلامية أو أيضا من الجالية الهندوسية وهم متعاونون معنا بل وشركاؤنا في هذه المنظومة وهي منظومة رابطة العالم الإسلامي والتي تعنى بتصحيح المفاهيم وأيضا بتعزيز الوحدة الإنسانية من أجل وئامها الوطني ومن أجل سلامنا العالمي Uh, especially me as the Secretary General of this independent organization, I have friendship from diverse uh, communities here in India, be them from the Islamic side and also from the Hindu community. And they are not just friends, but they are partners with whom we uh, cooperate. Uh, within the Muslim World League, it's our, in our principles that we work on rectifying and presenting the true image of the faith so that we can further strengthen the relationship with the different faiths of the world. ونتبادل الزيارة مع هذه المكونات المتنوعة لدينا أصدقاء من ذلك التنوع لدي في الهند أصدقاء فاعلون كبار حتى أيضا من الجاء من المكون الهندوسي وهو يمثل الأغلبية نحن نعلم أن الأغلبية في جمهورية الهند هي الأغلبية الهندوسية ولذلك مع أن الدستور الهندي هو دستور علماني لأجل أن يجمع هذه المكونات تحت مظلة واحدة لكننا نؤمن بأن أيضا المكون الأغلب هو مكون من الديانة الهندوسية ندرك ذلك ونؤمن بذلك ونتواصل مع هذا المكون تواصل الأصدقاء تواصل المتعاونين لدينا شخصيات أنا أيضا أعتز بصداقتهم مثل السيد تقرو وأيضا السيد شيري شيري شنكر وغيرهم أيضا من أصدقائي الذين أتواصل معهم بصفة مستمرة. And of course within the framework of our organization we exchange visits with the diverse uh, components of the Indian society and we know that India is a Hindu majority country even though the constitution of India is a secular constitution and within which it's an umbrella for all the different Uh, sects and all the different diversity uh, that are united under this one nation. And, but we realize the fact that the biggest component of the country is the Hindu uh, component. So thus we engage with them in friendship and also we have an outreach with them. And in that regard I would like to point out that I have very strong relationship and a friendship with uh, both Sadhguru and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar to name a few among many. وهؤلاء الأصدقاء نتعاون معهم ولدينا مشتركات كبيرة معهم من أجل سلام هذا العالم من أجل أن تسود المحبة لهذا العالم من أجل أن نزرع الوعي في هذا العالم بأن الاختلاف والتنوع هو أمر طبيعي لا يجب أن يؤثر على محبتنا لبعض لا يجب أن يؤثر على سلامنا ولا على وئام مجتمعاتنا الوطنية حول العالم And with those people that I have mentioned, I have, we have many common values and we have this uh, common mission uh, for, uh, to promote peace uh, and stability in this world and its national societies. 
and to convey to the, the, to the rest of the world that the diversity and, uh, and differences is a very natural part of our life. And we also know that the Muslim Islam in the Republic of Hind is a Muslim that is a country 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 ويعمل على تطبيق هذا الدستور بالتعاون أيضا مع حكومته هنا الوعي الوعي الديني الوعي الديني يجب أن يكون أداة تعزيز للتعايش الوعي الديني الحقيقي يجب أن يكون أداة للتسامح يجب أن يكون أداة للتواصل أداة للمحبة أداة للتعاون أداة لإثراء الإنسانية بالعلوم التي مؤطرة التي تؤطرها القيم التي نتشارك فيها. And we know that the Muslim component in the Indian society is a, uh, also very important component, and it's an uh, Muslim components in the Indian society. They are proud of their uh, of nationality that they are Indian national, and they are proud of their constitution. And here, the religious awareness plays a very crucial role. It uh, should be taken, the uh, religious awareness, as a tool for coexistence, as a tool to promote uh, tolerance, as a tool to co for cooperation, and as a tool for enrichment uh, to further uh, the co cooperation between the different elements of the society. Yes, we are working with all of these goals. We are working with شركائنا في جمهورية الهند ونحن من القديم في عالمنا الإسلامي نسمع عن الحكمة الهندية ونعلم أنها صنعت وعملت الكثير من أجل الإنسانية نتواصل مع هذه الحكمة نتواصل مع حكماء الهند ونحن نعلم أن هذا التعايش الذي يتطلع إليه الجميع من خلال هذا التنوع هو هدف مشترك هو هدف مشترك لكافة التنوع ليس فقط في تنوعنا الذي يهمنا في مكوننا الذي نتحدث عنه الآن إنما يهمنا أيضا حول العالم التعايش العالمي يهم الجميع يهم محبي الخير نعم يحرص كل محبي الخير حول العالم على هذا التعايش وندرك بأن المكون الهندي بمختلف طيفه بمختلف طيفه بمختلف هوياته هذا التنوع قادر على ان يقدم للجميع نموذجا رائعا للتعايش التعايش لا شك انه مطلب انساني ولكننا نتحدث عن تعايش واقع نحن نقدر الخطوات التي تعمل من أجل هذا التعايش هذا التعايش الذي مع الأسف في عالمنا أصبح يتراجع بعض الشيء حول العالم ولكننا عندما نتحدث عن الحكمة الهندية نتحدث عن الدستور الهندي نتحدث عن مقومات عن دعائم مهمة جدا لصناعة وإبقاء هذا التعايش ماثلا على الواقع. Yes, of course, uh, to we reach out with the different components of, and diversity for the common objectives that we share. Uh, we have heard a lot about the Indian wisdom, and we know that uh, the this uh, Indian wisdom have contributed a lot to humanity. We know that we have a common objective of coexisting peacefully together. We know that here coexistence is very important but we know that around the world is very important that we also work on uh, uh, promoting stability and harmony all over the world uh, we know that the indian components with all its diversity is a great model for coexistence not only in just mere words but also on the ground and we appreciate all the efforts and steps taken in this regard we, but we also aware of the fact that around the world we see that there is um, negative trends in coexistence around the world. And here 
we have to take benefit from the common values that we share together and work further on strengthening them. نتحدث هنا في جمهورية الهند مع عدد من المكونات واستمعنا إلى أيضا المكون الإسلامي وقلت قبل قليل بأنه فخور بأنه ينتمي إلى بلده كمواطن هندي ويفتخر أيضا بالدستور ويحمي هذا الدستور وأيضا يفتخر بأخوته في المواطنة من جميع الهويات الأخرى الهويات الأخرى ولا سيما التنوع الديني هو يعتز بزمالته الوطنية بأخوته الوطنية مع تنوع الديني هذا هو الوعي الحقيقي والذي يمثل الإسلام نعم التنوع كما قلت قبل قليل بأنه أمر حتمي من طبيعة هذه الحياة لكن هذا التنوع يعزز من دعمنا لوطننا يعزز من دعمنا لوئامنا يعزز من سلام عالمنا نريد في هذا العالم ككل أن تكون هذه المفاهيم حاضرة لدى الجميع الوطن هو للجميع والدستور للجميع ولا وليس هناك شيء أكثر غيابا وأكثر طلبا في هذا العالم من حاجتنا جميعا في هذا العالم ككل إلى المزيد وإلى تعزيز الوعي من أجل صالح الجميع في هذا العالم ككل. Uh, of course, we, we in our world we want tangible uh, steps, practical steps to uh, to implement all that. Just mere words are not enough. We have talked uh, just moments ago about the different components in the Indian society. And we have been in the past days engaging with them. Uh, and I know that the, India, the Muslim component of the Indian society, they are, as I said, proud of their constitution and proud of their nation. And they are proud of the brotherhood that they share with the rest of the components on the, of the Indian society. We know that diversity, it should be taken as a source that promotes uh, more patriotic feelings within the, within the, within the country. We want these uh, attributes and these positive values to be seen all over the world. Uh, so that because we know the nation and the constitution is not, it's for everyone. It's not for just a uh, uh, particular set of groups. So we have to further around the world work on promoting religious awareness among the different components. <laughs> عندما يتحدث عن حتمية الصدام الحضاري بهذه النظرية المتشائمة يجعل ذلك منصبا على أمرين على الصدام الديني والصدام الثقافي وهي نظرية متشائمة خاطئة تماما ولهذا تنبهت الأمم المتحدة إلى خطورة هذه النظرية على عالمنا وأنشأت منظمة تحالف الحضارات ولهذا قامت رابطة العالم الإسلامي قبل حوالي شهر في الأمم المتحدة وبدعم من قيادة الأمم المتحدة وبحضور قيادات الأمم المتحدة على إطلاق مبادرة مد الجسور بين الشرق والغرب من أجل التفاهم ومن أجل السلام نعم تتحالف الحضارات وتتعاون الحضارات وكانت منظمة تحالف الحضارات في الأمم المتحدة شريكا لنا في هذا في هذه المبادرة. Of course, uh, there is this pessimist theory in the world that says that the clash between civilization is unavoidable, and thus uh, such a clash it depends on two factors: that are the religions and also civilizations. That's why the United Nations have uh, been aware to such theories and they have established an organization, an organ within the United Nations called the Alliance of Civilization. 
And that's why the Muslim World League, uh, in cooperation with the United Nations and their leadership, have launched an initiative in this regard uh, with, from the platform of the United Nations. This initiative is called the Building Bridges Between the East and the West. Yes, we can cooperate together, and yes, we can live in peace together. وكان لنا لقاءات من البارحة حتى اليوم رائعة جدا ترجمت وعكست ما قلته قبل قليل من الحكمة الهندية كانت لقاءات مع التنوع وكانت لقاءات رائعة جدا تجعلنا في تفاؤل مستمر حول هذا التحالف الحضاري بمختلف هوياته وأيضا على تعزيز المفهوم الوطني وأنا أقول بأن هذه المكونات الدينية والمكونات الثقافية بمختلف هوياتها الدينية والثقافية هي من أكبر الدعائم لحماية الدستور ولا أقول هنا أيضا في الهند بل وأقول حول العالم لأن العالم اليوم أصبح يتأثر بعضه ببعض ولهذا فتعزيز هذا الوئام وتعزيز هذا السلام العالمي يهم كل الدولة نعم يهم كل دولة في عالمنا نحرص جدا على تعزيز هذا الأمر ولا شك أن تعزيزه يأتي من المراحل الأولى الأسرة لها دور التعليم له دور منصات التأثير الديني لها دور وهذه مهمة جدا لأنها تحكي حقيقة الوعي نعم تحكي الوعي الديني الوعي الثقافي Of course uh, since yesterday I have engaged in many dialogues and meetings with the different diverse component, uh, component of the society and there is a, 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 a true sense of optimism between them uh, I, uh, we work together on promoting patriotic values among all. And as I have said, this diversity is a, a way and a tool to protect the d Constitution, not here just in India, but around the world. Uh, we have and we need to work on promoting harmony in all the countries of the world, because we know the world now is very connected and each country influences the other. And we know that the changes such as this can come from an early age. Uh, different components play a factor, uh, play a, uh, a role in this. We know education plays a role. We know the family plays a role in promoting such values, and also the platform of influence in the society play a role. ولهذا أؤكد أيضا على أن الخطوات العملية مهمة للغاية. نحن في هذا العالم بحاجة إلى أن نرى آثارا عملية. وعندما نتحدث عن الوعي نتحدث عن الحكمة نريد أن تكون هذه على أرض الواقع في عالمنا ككل وليس في دولة وطنية أو عشر دول أو عشرين أو ثلاثين إنما في دول العالم ككل حديثنا من هذه المنصة هو حديث موجه للعالم بأسره لأن يعلم أن هذه المنصة منصة مؤثرة ودولية ولها حضور مهم جدا ولهذا أنا أقول وأخاطب العالم بأسره بأن هذا التحالف الحضاري هو تحالف ضروري ليس خيارا نقبله أو لا نقبله هو مستقبل هو تحديد مسار وبإذن الله صناعة مصير هذا التحالف يحتاج بعضه إلى بعض نحن في هذا العالم لا يمكن أن يعيش أحد لوحده مطلقا لا بد له من غيره وهذا الغير هو إنسان مثله هو إنسان مثله لا بد أن يتفاعل معه لا بد أن يتعاون معه لا بد أن يتفاهم قبل ذلك معه ولهذا لا بد من أن نصنع الوعي في عالمنا ككل أن نصنعه في أطفالنا لأنهم هم أجيال المستقبل ما أكثر ما تخطئ نظرية واحدة 
يتحدث شخص واحد من منطلق ديني أو من منطلق فلسفي أو حتى من مفهوم وطني يعتقد أنه صواب ولكنه يؤثر في الآخرين بنظرية خاطئة تماما ولهذا الفرق بين الصواب والخطأ هو النتائج النتيجة التي يسجلها التاريخ هي التي توضح لنا الفرق بين الخطأ والصواب Of course, I would like to reiterate again that we need palpable and practical steps on the ground. We, uh, we, not, we want uh, all over the world, not just here in India. Not just, it's not enough to have these values in a 10 or 20 or 30 countries, but we want it all over the world. And I'm from this pulpit, I know this is a very influential and very international pulpit, I would like to address the world, that we want to further foster and promote these values. Uh, this alliance uh, it's, is a necessity. It is the future, that to have this alliance between us. It is the shaping of our destiny that we need to focus on. It's not something that we can take it or leave it. It has to be done, and we need to further foster this alliance between us. Uh, and of course, uh, when we engage with the other, we have to know this other is a, another human being like us. And we have to... Uh, foster understanding and cooperation with them. And this fact starts from a very young age, from childhood, because our children, they are our future. There are many such theories that I've talked about. There are many such theories that turn out to be in, inaccurate. They are, they are formulated based on religious perceptions sometimes and sometimes from social uh, uh, perceptions. But in the end, what determines a theory, whether it's correct or not, it's the outcome. So we have to do our part in ensuring that we have a better future and better tomorrow for coming generations. في ختام هذا الحديث سأشير إلى أن الثقافة الإسلامية هي ثقافة محبة للجميع. هي ثقافة متسامحة. هي ثقافة تحب الحوار. هي ثقافة تتميز بالوعي. ثقافة تحترم الدول الوطنية تحترم خيار الدول الوطنية تحترم هذه الثقافة تحترم احترام الدساتير واحترام القوانين ما دمنا نعيش في إطار دول هذه الدساتير وإطار دول هذه القوانين المسلم متعايش المسلم يحمل راية السلام المسلم محب للآخرين ويحب الخير للآخرين المسلم ليس فقط يحب الخير بل ويبذل الخير للآخرين ولهذا الذي يمثل الإسلام هي قيم الإسلام قيم الإسلام لا يمثل الإسلام أخطاء قد يرتكبها البعض حول العالم حول العالم باسم الإسلام الإسلام واضح الإسلام كتاب مفتوح يقرأه الجميع الإسلام كما قلت متسامح مع الجميع الإسلام لدي سماحة دينية الإسلام لدي انفتاح ديني الإسلام لدي تعايش مع الجميع نعم الإسلام لا يدعو فقط للتعايش بل يوجب ويوجب على المسلم أن يتعايش بسلام مع الجميع وأيضا عندما يختلف مع الآخرين فإنه يتحاور معهم ويتفاهم معهم عندما يكون الإنسان بعيدا عن أخيه الإنسان يكون هناك خوف يكون هناك توجس وعندما يقترب من بعض تتلاشى كثير من هذه المخاوف بل قد تتلاشى جميعا لكن يحصل هناك اختلاف طبيعي للهويات ولكن يجمع الجميع دستور واحد وقوانين يطبقها الجميع هذا هو الوعي الذي نتحدث به عن الإسلام كدين والمسلمون حول العالم يتفهمون ذلك المسلمون أكثر من مليار ثمان مئة مليون مسلم حول العالم يتفهمون هذا لا يمثل الإسلام نظرية واحدة يتحدث عنها شخص 
أو مجموعات معينة الإسلام هو حاضن ومنفتح على الجميع ويحب السلام وصناعة السلام ويحب التعاون مع الجميع من أجل وئام الدول الوطنية ومن أجل سلام الدول الوطنية ونحن نؤكد من رابطتنا رابطة العالم الإسلامي أنها منفتحة على الجميع وتقدر على وجه الخصوص ومن هذا المنبر الحكمة الهندية ونقدر أيضا علاقاتنا مع جميع المكونات والهويات الهندية Okay. In conclusion, I would like to uh, talk about the Islamic culture. And I would like to reiterate that the Islamic culture and Islamic civilization is an, uh, a civilization that is uh, open to love, engage, uh, open to engaging in di uh, dialogue, uh, respecting countries and uh, uh, the national countries of the national societies of the world. It respects the constitutions and the laws for those who are living under those constitutions and laws. They should and must respect these laws. A Muslim person is a person who coexists, is a person who carries the banner of peace. It's a person who loves others, and not just love others, but do all he can to manifest this love on the ground. Uh, Islam is not uh, uh, only, uh, 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 only words, but it's actually something practical, it rep uh, represented in the brotherhood that is shared uh, among uh, Muslims and others. Uh, Islam is an open book for all. And, and in Islam, uh, the coexistence is not just something that is uh, promoted, it, but it's some, and something as an obligation among Muslims to practice in their life. And when there are differences, but we understand that these differences should be engaged and uh, engaged in a manner that show respect for the, uh, for the other. When we are far apart from each other, when we are not close to one another, we know that there is room for fear to seep in between us. Thus, we have to work toward bridging these gaps and becoming closer. Mm -hmm. We know that uh, Muslims in one country, they are united under the, uh, on the, uh, under the constitution of that country. And there are on the world 1.8 billion Muslims. And these Muslims are not re represented by some inaccurate uh, theories, uh, but uh, by the true message of Islam. And they have to work and continue to work uh, on seeking avenues of cooperation with our others. And we reiterate at the Muslim World League that we and our organization is open to everyone and open to engage in dialogue with everyone. And we uh, also reiterate our appreciation for the Indian wisdom and the fact, the, the diversity and the love that we see in this country. Mm. Correct, Islam is not just tolerance. Islam is forgiveness. Yeah. The correction is Islam does not only promote uh, tolerance but being uh, forgiving towards other. وأيضا نحب أن نشير إلى أننا خلال جولاتنا حول العالم نشعر بزيارتنا للهند أننا في زيارة لبلد انفتح على هذه الزيارة وأيضا عزز من الأهداف المشتركة التي نؤمن بها جميعا وأيضا ندرك بأن هذه الزيارة مؤثرة ليس فقط للقاءاتنا البينية فيما بيننا ولأهدافنا المشتركة فقط بل وأيضا ستكون إن شاء الله ملهمة لغيرنا من دول العالم ستكون رسالة لمنصات دولية لمنصات حكومية منصات أهلية حول العالم للإفادة من هذا الانفتاح الذي نتحدث عن انفتاح الحوار انفتاح التفاهم انفتاح التفاهم انفتاح التأكيد على أهمية أن نكون معا من أجلنا معا من أجل دولنا الوطنية حول العالم من أجل سلامنا حول العالم نعم نعم نعمل ليس من أجلنا فقط بل نعمل من أجل عالمنا أجمع آه هذا العالم فيه المليارات من السكان جميعهم لهم مظلة واحدة هذه المظلة اسمها الأسرة الإنسانية اسمها الأخوة الإنسانية 
نعم الإنسان أخ الإنسان هناك أخ قريب هناك أخ بعيد نعم لكنهم جميعا إخوة وأسرة إنسانية واحدة الاختلاف بين الجميع كما قلنا ويقول كل حكيم ويقول كل مصلح هو أمر طبيعي وهو من طبيعة هذه الحياة Uh, through our travels around the world, uh, we see that in our travel to India, that here, uh, India is very open to our visits to this country, and we share common objectives that we are working together towards promoting them. Uh, and we know that what we, whatever we are doing here together is not influential only within this country, but it's influential to all over the world, because our, this message is an international message for the whole world and could be a source of inspiration for other countries to be more open to dialogue and more open towards tolerance. Of course, uh, we are together for the sake of our national countries and for the sake of the whole world. After all, this, uh, all people that are on this planet are one single family, one single human family, and a fraternal family that they share many in common. <laughs> شراكتنا من خلال شراكتنا معا إلى العالم لنقول له بأننا يجب أن نعمل معا لتكون أحاديثنا لتكون نظرياتنا لتكون آمالنا واقعة ملموسة تصلح في هذا العالم ككل من خلال التحالف الحضاري الذي يجب أن يكون أثرا ملموسا وليس مؤتمرات أو ندوات أو لقاءات في عالمنا نعم لا بد أن يكون أثرا ملموسا ننطلق من حكمتنا جميعا ننطلق من هذا التآلف ومن هذا المكون المتنوع أيضا حتى في جمهورية الهند ننطلق للعالم أجمع لنهلمه بأننا يجب أن نعمل جميعا من أجل هذا العالم نعم نعمل جميعا عملا uh, through our partnership here, we'll uh, launch towards the world. So it will be a message to the whole world that we are working towards realizing our aspirations and dreams to, through an alliance of civilization. This alliance is an uh, uh, alliance should, that should be tangible oh, and not only limited to uh, conferences and speeches. From here, from the Republic of India, we'll launch to send a message to the world of harmony and living together. ولذلك نسمع في هذا العالم حتى في لدى مؤتمرات لمنظمات دولية لمنظمات حكومية منظمات أهلية حول العالم نقول نعم هناك مبادرات رائعة جدا لكن نحتاج إلى أن نبادر ليس فقط نحتاج إلى أن تكون هذه المبادرات عملية على أرض الواقع ونحن جميعا بمختلف تنوعنا قادرون على أن نجعل هذه المبادرات التي يتحدث عنها عالمنا في تلك المنظمات حول العالم أن تكون على أرض الواقع ملموسة. Yes, uh, in our world and from many prominent international organizations hear about very good initiatives, but we want to reiterate to them and assure them that we want this on the ground. We want something tangible, and we are know that we are capable of to realize that on the ground. We don't need just initiative. We need to initiate. We don't need just words. We need action. Yes. yes. <clears throat> Shukran. Thank you. Your Excellency, Dr. Mohammed bin Abdul Karim Alisa, Secretary General, Muslim World League, members of your esteemed delegation. Excellencies, Mr. Siraj Qureshi, Chairman, India Islamic Cultural Center, Dr. Hafizur Rahman, Director of Kusra Foundation, scholars and eminent persons present, members of the media, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my proud privilege today to welcome His, His Excellency and convey my most sincere gratitude for accepting our invitation to visit India. 
It was indeed a treat to listen to him today and to see the visionary thought of a great scholar, a jurist, a person well versed with Islamic jurisprudence and understanding of the global events. His message is loud and clear that we live in harmony, we live in peace, if you would like to protect the future of humanity. Excellency, you as an authentic global voice of moderate Islam and a profound scholar, adored and respected by millions of people around the world. We in this hall were singularly fortunate to have this opportunity of hearing you. Excellency, your deep understanding of Islam and religions of the world, incessant efforts towards interfaith harmony, courage to persistently lead on the path of reforms is not only contributing to better understanding of Islam and its seminal contribution to humanity, but also preventing extremist and radical ideologies to play, plague the young minds. In her capacity, as Secretary General of the Muslim World League, you have extensively traveled throughout the world and propagated your message of peace, empathy, and coexistence in the most unambiguous and effective way, the way that we heard it today. Your interactions and persuasive articulations have not only brought about a deeper and better understanding of Islam, but also worked as a catalyst in promoting the values of compassion, tolerance and respect among different faiths and different people. The world in conflict and turmoil today needs it more than ever before. Friends, we are proud of the excellent relations that exist that exist between India and Saudi Arabia, which are rooted in shared cultural heritage, common values and economic ties. Our leaders share a common vision of the future and had been closely interacting with each other. The enduring profoundness of our historic relationship can be understood from the fact that during Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him time and the marriage of, and his marriage with Hazrat Khadija, she had liking, she had expressed her liking for silk and shawls from Kashmir in India. Excellency, India, the world's largest democracy and the mother of democracies, is a land of incredible diversity. In your talk, you elaborately mentioned about diversity as a fundamental trait of our existence. It has been a melting pot of cultures, religions, languages, and ethnicities which have coexistence, uh, coexisted in harmony for centuries. As an inclusive democracy, India has successfully managed to provide space for all its citizens, regardless of their religious, ethnic, and cultural identities. Amongst its numerous religious groups, Islam occupies a unique and significant position of pride, with India being home to the second largest Muslim population in the world. In fact, to give an idea of the scale we are talking about, Indian Muslim population is almost equal to the combined population of over 33 member states of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation. As I just mentioned, Islam arrived in India in the 7th century during the life of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, and gradually found a new home in this subcontinent. Over the centuries, it developed a unique syncretic tradition. It was kinetic and dynamic. It expanded and integrated. It was reformative and it was also which enriched the culture of the new land that they have arrived. 
the deep spiritual content of Hinduism and Islam brought the people together and helped bring, bring and helped in bringing about a social and intellectual understanding of each other. It gave rise to a distinct and vibrant expression of peace and harmony, notwithstanding the vagaries of political ups and downs. While the historians have focused more on the political events, they have failed to capture this underlying spirit of accommodation, tolerance and respect, the, social, the powerful societal undercurrents that brought the people together and cemented their relations. The Holy Quran emphasizes the importance of unity and understanding among people from diverse backgrounds. Excellency, you mentioned about the diversity. There is a purpose behind the diversity. That is what the Holy Quran says, that the humans were created and divided into different communities and the diversity was created among the tribes and people to facilitate mutual acquaintance and recognition. Excellency, you have also, in your speeches, frequently called for civilization reproachment based on our shared values and common interests to advocate the spirit of justice and universal brotherhood. The philosophy of cooperation and dialogue in Islam has over the centuries merged seamlessly with the ancient Hindu civilizational tradition of Vasudhava Kutumbakam, the world is one family. The, this thing with which you concluded your talk by telling that the world is one family is ingrained in our spiritual, in our, in our uh, religious books, but more importantly in the psyche of the people that we consider the entire world as one family. It was not a quick of history, but it was only by being open to accommodating various world views and ideas, interactions and assimilations of various cultures, beliefs and practices that India emerged as a sanctuary for persecuted people of all faiths from across the world since time immemorial. India welcomed Arab exiles in the court of Raja Dahir of Sindh, Jews, Tibetans, Parsis, Shias, Bangladeshis, Afghans, and many others with open arms. This enduring tradition of accommodation is a testament to India being a deeply rooted multi ethnic, multi religious, and multilingual society which believes and have an abiding faith in the commonality and the unity of all human beings. Swami Vivekananda, in the famous Parliament of World's Religions in Chicago in 93, had declared, and I quote, I'm, prou I'm proud to belong to a nation which has sheltered the persecuted and the refugees of all religions and all nations of the earth. This ethos of acceptance becomes all the more significant vis-a-vis -vis Islam, given that at a time when Islamic golden age was coming to an end with the Mongol capture of Baghdad in 1258, Indian heartland was quietly nurturing a Sufi renaissance with many sages and mystics spreading their message of peace and brotherhood. It was otherwise a time of great tumult in which striking change, changes in the realms of ideas and beliefs were taking place and believe, uh, were all around the world. The Islamic world had suddenly lost its political heft, but its spiritual and its, huma and its humane appeal continued to exist and exist as a very powerful force. A new orthodoxy was trying to challenge the Islamic universe of thought and in the midst of all this, India offered an oasis of stability and peace where yogis and calendars, the mystical masters, pilgrims, exiles, dissidents from different schools of thoughts found a new home. The close interaction among the people led to cultural fusion, 
it's not only in this art, literature, architect, cuisine, technology, etc., but more importantly, created a syncretic consciousness that permeated, permeated through common people. The edifice of modern India is built on the principle of equal rights, equal opportunities, and equal responsibilities for all its citizens. The equality is guaranteed by our constitution and law. This is also a part of our thinking and this thing. We will all strive and we should try to bring about that convergence where there is an equality in all respects amongst all of us. India continues to play its role as a refuge for heterodox ideas with infinite capacity to absorb dissent. Dissent does not mean disintegration. Dissent does not mean necessarily a confrontation. But in this country, because of your thought, because of your idea, no one is under threat. As a proud civilizational state, India believes in promoting tolerance, dialogue and cooperation to deal with the challenges of our time. It was no coincidence that despite having around 200 million Muslims, the involvement of Indian citizens in the global terrorism has been incredibly low. Yet the challenge of extremism and global terrorism compels us not to lower our guards, to preserve the security and stability within our borders and also rise to the security challenges beyond. India has been leading the fight, the fight against individuals and organizations who are promoting extremism, narcotics and terrorism. I vividly recall the terrorist attack on the Grand Mosque in Moscow and in, in Mecca in 1979 and how that incident became a turning point in the way Saudi Arabia looked at itself and the rest of the world. The attack was carried out by a handful of militants who seized the Holy Mosque and held the hostages for several days. The attack brought the issue of terrorism to the forefront and forced Saudi Arabia to reevaluate its security measures and foreign policy. India has also been a victim of terrorism for many decades. The country has faced numerous terrorist attacks, including the 2008 Mumbai attacks, which claimed 168 lives. India has actively been working to combat terrorism through various means, including strengthening its security apparatus, enacting new laws, and cooperating with other countries to prevent terrorist activities. However, in this war against terror, even in the face of grave provocation, India has steadfastly upheld the rule of law, rights of its citizens, and protection of human values and human rights. India is an extremely responsible power, but when the need for a hot pursuit against terrorist heavens it was, was felt, we have gone all out to destroy terrorism in our national interest. Excellency, you have in the past rejected any attempt to associate terrorism with any nationality, civilization or religion. I think this is the absolutely right approach. Terrorism is not linked to any religion. It is the individuals who get misguided. And probably it is the duty of the spiritual and these leaders to see that they can belong to any religion, any faith, any belief system, any political ideology, but anyone who takes the path of violence will have to be, will have to be uh, countered as effectively and with all the tools that are possible. You have been a strong votary of the need to shun the path of conflict and supported peace. As G20 president, we ideated on slogan for the summit and I would like to repeat and emphasize it. This, our catchword for that was one earth, one family, one future. Either we sail together or we are doomed to sink together. If we have to sail together, we have to cooperate. We have got to bring about that harmony, which Her Excellency you so eloquently told. 
is only with mutual trust and cooperation amongst nations, civil societies, religious groups, and people of the world that security, stability, sustainable development, and a dignified life for all citizens and the future citizens, the future generations can be ensured. In the past, nations might have fought with each other to resolve their differences. But as our Prime Minister says, this is no more an age of war. Future battles for the good of humanity will have to be fought against hunger, poverty, ignorance and want. In today's world, with complex geopolitical challenges confronting us, religion has to become a beckoning light for the humanity to usher into an era of peace and harmony. We are fortunate, we have got many distinguished religious leaders sitting here from various pursuits and various thoughts and I do hope that they understand the great responsibility to lead the society in these critical moments. Our differences will have to take a back seat. We will have to resolve them through dialogue and interaction and compromise. And we will have to realize the unleash the human potential and make this world a better place to live for us and our coming generations. Excellency, your to visit today is an opportunity to deepen the cooperation between our two countries and then explore new avenues for partnership. I'm sure that you will enjoy your stay in India and carry fond memories of the, pla of the place back with you. You mentioned about some institutional arrangement that you should make to carry this message forward. We do look forward for your guidance and help in this matter. India and Saudi Arabia together can probably do a lot and we need to further strengthen the ties between our two nations. I would once again like to express my thanks and gratitude to you, Your Excellency, for your visit. And I would also like to thank the Islamic Center for organizing this function and the Kuzra Foundation for their initiative. And my thanks also to the distinguished guests and the spiritual leaders who have graced this occasion.